the bond market needs to win next year after a horrific 2022. What is the path to total return next year in debt markets? Hey, good morning, Tom. Yeah, it was, it's been a very challenging 2022. I think the, you know, the IG index is down about 13%. Um, but the coupon is materially higher going forward and yields are a lot higher going forward. So you know, the look at the starting point is good. Um, we think that for two reasons, uh, you tend to not have back-to-back -back negative years for fixed income. The first is that obviously a higher yield gives you a greater break even, a greater buffer going forward um, for volatility and for spread and interest rate widening. But two, the, the higher cost of debt generally is a burden on the economy. And as you have a higher uh, cost of debt, it starts to slow the economy and it makes things, uh, it makes eventually the Fed cut, which we do think is, is certainly in play the back half of, of 2023. So pretty good starting point. Um, you got to get over the pain of this year, but I do think the technicals will be very good for IG next year um, at these higher yield levels. Well, let's talk about the pain. I'm looking at stocks and I'm just asking myself, is that it? We're down 20% almost on the S&P year today, down 31 on the NASDAQ, a little bit more on that. I look at where spreads are this year, Matt, and I'm just asking myself, is that it? Is that the price that we have to pay for 400 basis points worth of tightening in nine months? And some people say, yeah, I think that's it. Others, Matt, say no way. You're not getting away with blowing up 10 years, a decade worth of easy central bank policy with these numbers. What do you say back to those people? So, so I won't speak to the equity markets, but I'll speak to the fixed income part. And it's the, it's the worst year we've ever had. So would you say, is that it? I mean, we were down over 20% at one point, and that was just an absolute catastrophe and things that never anybody ever would have thought could happen to that magnitude, I don't think. Um, very few people were calling for a 20% down year in the bond market. Um, so, you know, I think the, the readjustment has taken place. Um, when you hike, when you hike 400 basis points in, in, in less than you know nine months, um, you know it's gonna it's gonna leave a mark, and, and that certainly is what happened. But I do think we're much better in balance at this point. And you know we were talking earlier whether the Fed hikes one, two, three more times. You know I'm kind of more in the camp of, of they hike in February. I do think they'll hike again in March, but that's that's probably it. So we're 90 to 95 percent of the way done here. Um, so I think you know the floor is, is sort of been set, and the worst is, is certainly behind us. Although credit spreads are pretty much in line with averages, are they pricing in a recession as well, or are they pricing in so something much more mild? Yeah, so it's it's the tale of two markets. If you just look at spreads, the answer is no. Um, you know, we're in the 120 to 130 basis point range on spreads. That is 40 to 50 basis points wider on the year, so it is a pretty material and move wider. Um, but they've been cheaper about 30% of the time over the last five years and about 40% of the time over the last 10 years. So we're not pricing in a recession. If things were to significantly slow down, credit spreads likely would have right. to go wider. But if you look at yields, yields are at the, roughly the 96 percentile over the last decade. So all in yields are still very elevated and you are mm -hmm. getting paid, in my opinion, to take on credit risk. Um, the question right. is, are, are you better off in treasuries or are you better off in credit?